the leader. Whether that happens, what that looks like, if it's even possible, they're all unknowns. Mm. But for a Prime Minister five weeks in, for your backbenchers to be actively having those conversations is a reflection on just how bad it's got in such a short space of time for yeah, her. And as she, she left the House, she, she said the last thing we need is a general election mm. herself. Uh, Beth, thanks so much. That's really interesting. Well, that's the view of our political editor. Let's now go across the country to find out what people outside of Westminster think about what they've been hearing from the Prime Minister this afternoon, how they think it may affect them. Uh, well, let's uh, speak to, from South End on Sea, a mortgage broker and director of R3 Mortgages, Riz Malik, uh, director at the Birmingham-based bakery Lil's Par, Lucy Scott, and also from Bradford on Avon in Wiltshire, the president of the National Pensioners Convention, Rosie McGregor. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, Riz, Riz Malik, mortgage broker, let's talk to you first of all. Of course, we've been talking a lot about the economy this morning, uh, the pound falling. How have the last few months, how have the last few days been for you? I feel like I'm living in a dream and someone's going to wake me up at some moment in time and tell me that this was all a joke or something. The last few months in the mortgage market have been very unstable, but the last few weeks have been a complete and utter nightmare. And the problem that we have is that I can't see the what's going to be done to get us out of this mess. OK, we've got mortgage rates that are changing on an hourly basis. We've got lenders repricing their deals because the deals they're coming out with a few hours later don't make any economic sense. But what really irritates me is we have got a prime minister who, on your show and repeatedly, keeps on saying that interest rates are not nothing to do with her and they're set by the Bank of England. Although that's correct, if you don't know as the Prime Minister that the financial markets hang on every word that you say about the economic outlook, you shouldn't be in the job. This is A-level economics. It's all a circle. And the problem that we have and the perfect storm that is brewing is they've brought forward the OBR report to Halloween, ironically, uh, but then even if that has been delivered and it's got a massive cherry on top and the markets love it, there isn't time to digest that, to reflect that into mortgage pricing by the time the MPC meet the following week. And they're more than likely going to raise interest rates further. So I just, I, I, I'm in utter shock with what's happening at the moment. Okay. And in addition, last week we had a, a meeting and last week we had a meeting of the Chancellor and members of the financial community to come up with a package. Well, where is that package? We need speed in this situation at the same rate as we had during COVID. Otherwise, I fear for what's going to happen. OK, well, that's pretty clear. Uh, let's bring in Lucy Scott from, from Lil's Parlour Bakery. Uh, Lucy, just explain to us very briefly how your organisation works, first of all. So Lil's Parlour is a CIC, so that's a community interest company. That means we're a company registered for the social good. So our profits go back into making sure that the community is kind of helped. So that's what I do. So I buy everything in in the same way as a normal business, don't receive any discounts, don't receive any help. But what happens is any profits that I make go back directly into making sure that we feed people, basically. And, and you, you basically to, to pay what you can. So if people come in and they can't afford to pay for a loaf of bread, you will essentially give it to them. Yeah, exactly. So there is a recommended donation. Um, so people can choose to pay the recommended donation or they can pay less. They can pay a little bit more to pay it forward. But all our transactions are completely anonymous. So people can come here into a safe, non-judgmental space and be able to provide for their family if that's what they need to do. OK, so what's your reflections on, on, on the world of politics over the last few weeks and how people who are using your services are coping? I, you know, just listening to the gentleman before when he said, I feel like I'm just going to one day somebody's going to be like, Lucy, Lucy, it's all all right. It was all a big joke sort of thing. Um, the mood of my customers coming in is just... A lot of sadness, to be honest. The people that come here, they're, they're working people. Some of them have two or three jobs. And there's just no thought for how 
normal people are going to survive this, how much stress it's putting on them and their families, how it's affecting their mental health. So I wish that these people from the government would go and walk around Aldi on a Monday afternoon, go and see how people are choosing between a can of beans and a, a you know a packet of pasta. It, it's fair enough standing there talking about numbers and they need to really start thinking about how this is affecting normal people because I do worry we've got a generation of children coming up that have seen nothing but their parents worry now for two, three, four years. How is that going to reflect in the future? And how are people on the ground now going to cope? You know, it's affecting everybody badly. And I don't think there's enough compassion, understanding that that's actually the case on the ground. OK. Uh, Rosie McGregor from the National Pensioners Convention. Um, Rosie, obviously, we've been talking a lot about the economy and there's been a lot of talk about the impact on pensions. Pensions are one of those subjects that some people understand a great deal about. I'm sure you're one of them. Most people don't really understand a great deal. Um, most people probably don't even understand if they have a pension, where the money goes, how it's looked after. Who, who are the ones in your understanding, the ones on the defined benefit pensions, that potentially could be affected. How concerned are you about the economic potential impact on, on those people? Very concerned. Uh, there's a massive concern amongst many pensioners following the mini budget and the impact it's having on the stock market. And those on defined benefits, um, potentially, depending on where the investments are made, could find that they are at some risk. And certainly those who are not yet retired but looking forward to retirement will be very, very worried. I'm fairly lucky myself in that I was on a final salary pension uh, from local government. Uh, but even so, um, I am extremely worried at the present time by inflation. And um, I just don't feel that Liz Truss and her government actually get it. I mean, she says, she said in PMQs, I'm listening. But quite frankly, I don't think she's listening to pensioners. And um, even the Bank of England uh, and the IMF are saying basically she doesn't get it. So when is she going to get it? And we need, uh, I think, a general election um, because we can't go on like this. And many pensioners tell me they are facing a really bleak choice between putting food on the table, heating their homes, traveling anywhere, and many feel a sense of loneliness and despair. And I have to say as well, some of those pensioners would be Tory voters. Well, indeed. Um, and you referred to Prime Minister's questions. Uh, Riz Malik, in terms of what you heard today from the Prime Minister, we heard a talking about no-fault evictions um, and, and whether or not they will be banned. You obviously have a lot of buy-to-let landlords on, on, on your books. What, what do you think the impact on those kind of policies is going to have? The buy-to-let market is one of the markets I'm the most concerned about. The problem that you're going to have is people are going to be coming off deals and the way lenders calculate the loan amounts, they're not going to be able to borrow the same amount of money. And any raises in the actual rates are going to be passed on to the tenants. And it's just going to be a cycle because those tenants are our are, are first time buyers of tomorrow. So it's going to take them longer to save up for a property. They're not going to be able to. So they're then going to call on the bank of mum and dad to dip into their pocket to help them onto the housing ladder. This is just going to have knock on effects from one stage to the other because landlords are going to look at their numbers and say, this doesn't make any sense anymore. And although the landlord gets beaten up uh, regularly in the UK, the landlord solves a very, very uh, key problem that we have in the private rental sector. Uh, and the government's not there with a solution to house the people that the landlords are actually uh, assisting. So I th I'm fearful for that market even more than I am for the residential market. OK. Um, Lucy, in terms of, of, of how you're managing on a daily basis, the cost of, of the stuff you're buying, it, it's fluctuating a lot at, at the moment, is it, isn't it? I understand you're not even taking a salary. I mean, how, how sustainable is it that you can keep going with your business? I'm really lucky. Um, we don't have any children. We actually do live in a rented property and we've got a, we've got a good landlord. Um, but my husband at the moment is the person that's providing our kind of, you know, base shack stuff at home. So I'm in a lucky position to do that. Ingredients costs are 
insane. Just last week, the price of 12 eggs went up 40% from Monday to Friday. Why? There's just, it's just every week. So even basic ingredients like butter, chocolate, flour, simple things that would have, you know, have been considered cheap store cupboard ingredients are now becoming unobtainable for some people and I just don't understand how this is going to ever end it's just a spiral that seems to be out of control and at some point people have got to say this we've had enough of this it's got to stop otherwise the society as we know it at the moment I believe is just going to collapse but long term I'm here I'm doing what I do I have amazing supportive customers I will keep being here for as long as I can I'm very, very stubborn. Um, I will always speak up for people. And for as long as I can do that, I'm, I'm sticking around. Bless you for that. Lu Lucy Rosie said that she thought a general election was needed. Do, do, do you think that would solve anything? I, I find it really, I, I would love a general election. Um, I think that there's a, a lot of stuff that needs to be weeded out. However, I'm not sure that there's strong leadership on any any anywhere at the moment I just think it all needs a big shake up and it just needs a little bit of a fresh start to be honest some new voices some some new ideas some I think we just need general change across our whole political system at the moment. Okay uh, back to Rosie you know aside from a general election which the Prime Minister has just said at Prime Minister's questions that nobody needs what what else could the government do do you think to to help restore confidence in the pension market and help restore confidence of pensioners and indeed those approaching their pension well, age. I think there is a tremendous worry there amongst pensioners and I think the government could do something with regard to, for example, the triple lock on the state pension. Now Liz Truss did promise that she would restore the triple lock for next year. But there have been voices saying that this will not happen. And it is really important that the triple lock on the state pension, which ensures that it will be going up and uh, in line with inflation, is really important. Um, and a lot of people tell me that, uh, oh, well, pensioners are quite well off. Can I tell you that the majority of pensioners are not well off and ma the majority of pensioners rely on the state pension? So the triple lock is important to us. Right. And um, I think really she should just ditch her policies on um, uh, money uh, and what has been happening uh, so that uh, we can actually um, go back to a more stable economy. And I think this is the, the, the worst problem of the lot is we are in such a state of instability at the present time that no one knows what the future will hold. And that is a particular worry for pensioners. OK, we've only got um, 20 seconds, but I just want to bring in Riz again, very briefly, Riz, because both of, of Lucy and Rosie said that they would like to see another a general election. Yes or no, would you like to see that? Do you think it would solve anything? I don't think it's going to solve anything. I think the markets will react badly to it, but I do think that the position of the Chancellor needs to be re-advertised. OK, not a general election, just a new Chancellor. Uh, Riz Malik, mortgage broker, Lucy Scott from Lil's Parlour uh, and Ros McGregor from the National Pensioners Convention. Thank you all so much. Really great to talk to you and get your thoughts today. Thank you. You're watching Thank Sky you. News. Lots more coming up after this short break. <laughs>